Now, there's been a number of research studies that have made a direct causation correlation link between celiac disease, okay, and liver disease. And I just told you a minute ago some of those connections. So we know that the, you know the damage from gluten, okay, to the liver can damage the gallbladder. We know it can damage. Uh, damage the liver through an autoimmune process, and we also know that it can directly cause fatty infiltration into the liver. So, very important. Now, many of you who maybe have had the diagnosis of celiac disease, and so you went gluten-free. And here's one of the problems with the traditional gluten-free diet. So, again, people with celiac disease generally are told by their GI doctor to go on a gluten-free diet. But on a traditional gluten-free diet, the doctor doesn't say eat organic, right? So you're still, so now you're buying all this junk rice and all this junk corn byproducts, right? And these things are loaded with heavy metal. You know, rice has been shown to, particularly has been shown to contain uh, cadmium and arsenic and lead. We know that corn has been shown to contain mercury. Uh, but we also know that these products, these grain, or these not grain-free, but these, you know, quote-unquote traditional gluten-free products, okay, and oats are the same way, guys, um, any grain, what do they contain, uh, what do they contain a lot of? Glyphosate. Now, some would say, well, yeah, but I, I'm buying mine organic. Okay, so if you're buying it organic, but then you have to understand that corn and rice uh, the products that they're making them with have a high amount of fructose, which I showed you earlier. Fructose can also cause fatty liver. So if you're just replacing your wheat bread for your rice or your cornbread, and you're getting all this excessive fructose, plus you're getting the glyphosate, plus you're getting the heavy metals, know that all this right here has got to go right into your liver, and your liver's got to help your body cope and deal with that. So if you're diagnosed with celiac disease and you're eating that traditional gluten-free diet where you're still eating rice and corn and oats and millet and sorghum and some of the other grains because because your your GI doctor said those were okay then you're sabotaging the ability for your liver to recover okay so that's what I was just talking about is that um, traditional gluten-free diets so this is what I mean traditional gluten-free diets a classic gluten-free which is uh, wheat, barley, and rye free may increase the risk, may increase the risk rather of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, NAFL. Um, some people oftentimes refer to it as NASH, N-A-S-H, non-alcoholic -alcohol stea uh, steatohepatitis. Um, those conditions can be increased as a result, again, of why, why? corn, the rice, the metals, the mold contamination of the grains, those affect the liver. Other things in these products are fructose, as I mentioned a minute ago, fructose contaminated, or not so much contaminated, but fructose being a you know, high, uh, high fructose, uh, being a major ingredient in most of these products. So they're not good for you. And then you add to that, again, pesticides. Now, Let's add one more, and that's excessive carbohydrate, um, because the carbohydrate content can be problematic to the damaged liver. And this is this is true, guys. Even if you're eating a grain-free, high-carbohydrate diet, so if you're just replacing, you know, all the things that you were eating that maybe they were corn or rice or wheat-based, and you're just instead you're using tons of tapioca and cassava, know that those are also high carb, and those will contribute to uh, too many carbs. A lot of people don't know this. Too many carbs will increase your, increase your triglycerides. And when you have high triglycerides and a pre-existing liver problem, your body won't recover. The triglycerides will overwhelm your liver. Um, that's in, an, in a nutshell, that's pretty much basically what happens with fatty liver. So these are all things common in the traditional gluten-free diet that still can increase your risk of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. That's why we go on to delineate traditional gluten-free and true gluten-free um, so that you understand those differences. Okay, I, I told you I would talk a little bit about fructose, so I wanna show you a couple of research studies here on fructose. So you can see here, uh, fructose promotes leaky gut, endotoxemia. Endotoxemia means it allows things in your gut, bacterial byproducts from your gut to leak into your bloodstream, right? And then liver fibrosis, 
through ethanol-induced cytochrome P450 to E1 mediated oxidative and nitrative stress. So let's make English out of that. These results show that fructose causes protein nitration of intestinal tight junctions. Basically, it damages the, 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 the proteins that anchor cells together, resulting in increased gut leakiness and endotoxemia, followed by steatohepatitis with liver fibrosis, at least partly through the CYP2E1 uh, dependent manner. CYP stands for cytochrome, and this is, this is a, a, a detoxification enzyme within the liver, so that fructose comes in and damages the ability for cytochrome P2E1 to do its proper job. Now, in this other research study published in Journal of Nutritional Biochemistry, you see here the review says, the present review outlines some of the potential mechanisms associated with the development of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and fructose intake with particular focus on the role of intestinal barrier function. So it, it's been very well established that fructose by itself is one of the factors that we know causes leaky gut. So look at all the different gluten-free food products that are on the shelf that are super high in fructose. Look at all the other things, all the other the candy, um, the, the sweets, the, the, the cakes, the cookies, all those things. What are they sweeten them with? Most places nowadays are using high fructose corn syrup, not sugar, not sugar cane. Not that sugar cane is great for you either, but fructose is a lot cheaper. Uh, especially, uh, especially here in the U.S. Where, where the corn is subsidized. Taxpayer dollars go to grow more corn to produce that nonsense. And then they just put it in all the food. Um, you see the number one ingredient in most baby formulas is fructose. You'll see the number one ingredient in most doctor-recommended protein shakes for, for elderly is fructose. The number one kid vitamin shakes that are recommended, uh, the number one ingredient is fructose, right? So here we're setting people up for failure. All this fructose in the American diet is leading to massive quantities of debt and gut damage, which then lead to fatty storage, uh, fatty storage in your liver and subsequent diminished function of the liver itself, thus reducing your ability to detoxify thus enhancing the environmental toxicities that are coming into you and, and progressing any kind of chronic, inf chronic inflammatory illness. So what's the best diet then for somebody with liver damage? The number one thing that you want to make sure that you do if you've got liver damage in your diet is get the alcohol out. That's a no brainer. So we cut out alcohol, we cut out grain, we reduce total carbohydrates. For most people, this needs to look like, from a calorie perspective, no more than 33% of total calories. You, can't over, you don't want to overwhelm the body with carbohydrate calories when the liver is taking on damage. You want to eat organic food. You want to reduce your exposure to environmental toxins. And this could be exposure in the air, exposure in the water, exposure in your food, right? A lot of these toxins are found in food. And, uh, and so this is, these are the things that you want to do as an absolute minimum. Now, beyond that, there may be some other issues that you struggle with. If you do have a bacterial imbalance or a yeast overgrowth, you want to make sure you, you address that, that you deal with that. Because it's very hard for the liver to heal as long as the yeast are just coming back and converting your carbohydrates into alcohol that are subsequently damaging, uh, damaging your liver. Now, a lot of you too struggle with, because of the, the chronic years of damage, you have food sensitivity or food allergies. And so you're still eating food that's creating inflammatory damage to your, to your gut and, and subsequently overworking your liver. So it can be very, very smart to get some testing done to help you identify what, what food, what kind of diet you need to dial in even more specifically behind or beyond rather some of these generalized items. Now, the other thing that you wanna make sure that you're doing here is you wanna look at your medication list. So you need to do, and this is not me telling you to get off your medicines. That's a conversation you need to have with your prescribing doctor, but your meds may be playing into this. And so you need to have a review, a medication review with your doctor. Now. You know, I had somebody last year come in and is an elderly woman and she, she was in her 70s and she was on about 15 different medications and the vast majority of them were being processed through the liver. 
and none of her doctors, she had four different doctors and none of them had ever reviewed what the other ones were prescribing and her liver was in really bad shape. As a matter of fact, she was dying. She was, she was a few months away from the, from the deathbed. They, but some of them had just kind of sent her home you know, with a death sentence and what, what was effective for her was getting her to peel back many of those medicines because the medicines at that point in her in her life were just they were overwhelming her they were so toxic to her liver that they were overwhelming her body's ability to function now if you ever suspect a liver problem maybe you've been to the doctor and you had and you're not quite sure but but some of the things that you, you know that that liver damage or that struggling livers will create and I know this is kind of generic, but fatigue is a really common symptom. You know, if it gets, if it progresses, you can get yellow discoloration of the skin. That's called jaundice. You see that sometimes in babies whose livers aren't developed fully, um, or the eyes. So if your eyes are turning yellower, your skin is is starting to take on a yellowish tint. You, you got to suspect that your liver. Might be might be in trouble. Other things that that liver damage or, or or that you can ask your doctor to look for, and I would just encourage any of you during your annual checkups is have a measure ALT, AST, and there's another one that can be measured called bilirubin. And these these three markers are simple blood tests that can help you understand whether or not your liver is is struggling. Okay, is this is especially true. For those of you who also have any kind of skin damage, and not, not, not just the yellow discoloration, but skin damage like psoriasis or eczema, because these skin diseases are a direct reflection of a, of a failing liver oftentimes. And so, you know, what's the number one prescription that doctors write typically for these? It's steroids. And when you write steroids, guess what? This is just another medicine that we know can cause liver damage. So if these are diseases that predominantly are, are occurring as a result of the liver being completely overwhelmed, so the skin is doing more of a detoxification role because the liver can't handle it, and the treatment is a steroid, again, this just it goes back to what we've been talking about tonight, which is that vicious drug cycle, which is drugs don't cure disease, drugs treat symptoms, and if you're trying to treat symptoms, you have to understand you're going to induce additional new symptoms and eventually um, you're going to lose that, that battle because, again, if you're trying to figure out why, uh, then you don't want to mask the way your body communicates to you by, by artificially manipulating your symptoms. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.